So now that we've had, uh, you've identified your opportunities, we want to try and find what is your quote unquote big easy. Well, what is a big easy? Um, Elena, can we go to the next slide, please? So your big easy, as it says on this slide, is the opportunity that basically is the path of le is the easiest to implement and has the most impact, right? Because that's you can make progress as well as show impact. And obviously, your department chair, your dean, everybody, you're accountable to them. So you need to be able to show impact. So you want to pick something that won't be too challenging as well as you can show impact. So we'd like you to rate your um, the opportunities that you've identified on two bases, on the basis of the impact and the basis of uh, ease of implementation. And uh, they're both on a one to five scale. And then you total up and come up with a total. And please note that one to five, five being the highest impact and five also being the easiest project to do. So we just want to clarify that. It is normally people get confused and one is the easiest and five is the hardest. No, one is the hardest and five is the easiest. So we're trying to get the highest possible score. And as you see on this slide, uh, if you have a 10, well, that's obviously the um, the ideal big easy that you want to go with. Okay, everybody, time is up. Um, so hopefully you had a fairly easy time ranking. I know sometimes it can be really tough, and sometimes you might find you have a couple of items that are very close to each other. Um, I think the good news is with this process, if you find a little further down the line um, that you know the first, the one that you ended up choosing isn't working out quite right, you can circle back. Um, we're obviously not going to have time to, to do that today, but that's something to consider. Another thing to consider, um, when you're working with a group and if you all have quite diverse opinions about how to rank, you can have everybody individually rank the impact and ease for each project and total those numbers. And that's just one way to, you know, if it's not completely possible to come to a consensus, you can at least get a feel for, you know, where the group, where, where the group's thinking lies. Um, so that's just something to kind of take home with you if you if you do this project again if you use this approach again. Okay, next slide, please, Elena. So what should we do? So you've ranked your different opportunities. Um, hopefully, you've got one that's a clear front runner. Um, you've got your big easy. Um, and what we're going to do next is actually convert this into measurable outcomes. And you know, if you're accustomed to doing any kind of strategic planning, this is something we always try to do, right? We always try to make the things that we're going to work on measurable. Um, can we go to the next slide, please, Elena? So what we want to figure out for each of our opportunities is what our outcomes are and what our metrics are. And if you can't measure it, it means it's really too vague. So it means you need to put some more thinking in it. Another thing to think about when you're doing this, and another reason this step is important, is because oftentimes it really causes you to have additional conversations with your teammates about the opportunity that you've fleshed out. Um, sometimes what can happen during this phase, you can start to really like dig into the metrics and you realize, you know what, as a team we were not on the same page at all. In fact, when we were talking about this opportunity, we were each thinking of it in a, a slightly different way. So this is just a really good way to kind of do a reality check and just make sure, are we on the same page? Do we want to measure the same things? Do we want the same outcomes? Um, this can be kind of tricky. It's not really easy to measure success, to find success metrics. Um, people have been grappling with how to measure the outcomes of innovation and entrepreneurship and entrepreneurial mindset for a number of years. I don't think anybody's got it down pat. Um, so it's tricky. We've given you 15 minutes for this. Um, if as you're going through this, you find that you're just not able to find the metrics you're looking for, please do post to the chat window and Jimmy and I will um, you know, do some, um, do some thinking with you, see if we can come up with something for you. Um, and of course, if any other questions come up, please feel free to post. Um, so with that said, we're going to put you back to work for another 15 minutes. So um, grab your pens and, and get started. And, and again, feel free to ask us if you're really, um, if you're struggling with this or have questions. Okay, and time's up. So hopefully by now, um, 
you at least have a, an understanding across your team about the opportunity that you're going after and how you're going to be measuring that. Um, as I mentioned, you know, this can be um, kind of more of a cyclic process. So if as you, you know, start discussing this opportunity, you figured out, you know what, this isn't the big easy we thought it was, you can always go back to an earlier stage and look again um, at scoring and score again based on this new understanding um, and see if the results are a little bit different. Um, for today, though, um, we're on a tight schedule, so we're just going to plow ahead. Um, so if we could go to the next slide, please, Elena. So we're on to the what will we do. So we've kind of decided the direction that we're going to go in, so what our big easy is. But what we're going to do now is figure out what our Pathfinder project is in the guideposts. And so your Pathfinder project typically is something, it's kind of, you can think of it as like a bite-sized chunk of your opportunity. Opportunities tend to be pretty large, and your Pathfinder is something that you can get done in a, in a reasonable amount of time. Um, if we could go to the next slide, Elena, then I can, I can kind of show um, with the example. Um, so you'll see here that um, the Pathfinder project is to pilot this concept of an outcome with a competition with the Student Entrepreneurship Club. So it's something that's a little bit smaller that we can wrap our arms around. And here you'll see I've listed some guideposts. And guideposts you can think, for those of you that are familiar with hiking, I know we do a lot of hiking out here in New England, um, it's like a blaze almost um, on the hiking path. So it helps you know that you're moving in the right direction. So let's say you know your Pathfinder project is going to take the next three to six months to complete. What's going to be happening um, over the course of those three to six months? How do we know that we're going to be on the right path um, as we move to completion? And this is important to keep us on the right path, but also to celebrate some of the small outcomes along the way. Because I think you know when you're a change maker on campus, it can be it can be hard and it can be discouraging, and it's not all it's not all you know chocolates and and flowers. Um, you know, so it's it's good to kind of celebrate as you're moving through this. So um, if you have any questions, again, please post to the chat. Um, and I should actually ask Jimmy, any, any advice as they're going through and putting together their Pathfinder and their guideposts? I think you covered the points, Victoria. I think it's just uh, the guideposts it just helps you keep, uh, you know, keep track that you're making progress in the right direction because um, otherwise people sometimes tend to get uh, Distracted. Let's put it that way. So it's uh, it's a good way to uh, to stay on track, and we'll talk more about that in the in the next rule, which is the thirty thirty. But we'll come to that <laughs> after a few minutes. 